live all right hey everybody good afternoon it's friday we made it it's five o'clock and we are doing the live draw the friday live draw um and i've put my civil war comics work aside for the moment and i'm looking forward to doing a little uh friday spaceship live draw with you and we'll just make up a new kind of spaceship here i have a piece of paper and a pencil, all standard issue, whatever you have that makes marks on paper, whatever paper you have, you can use scrap paper if you want. Um, in fact, you know what I like to do? I like to put a little clipboard under my paper and I clip it on at the very edge and then I can move that paper around a little more easily. So I'm going to do that here. Got my pencil sharpened. Let's see here. So I've got a plan for a spaceship. We can start drawing it and we'll see what happens. I like to kind of make this stuff up as we go. It's a nice way to relax on a Friday afternoon, evening. So um, first of all, let's start with, we're gonna have like a ground across the bottom, but we'll put that in after. I like to put the ground in after I built the spaceship itself. I'm gonna start with like a, a gentle curve and I'm using my, my wrist to kind of curve that across the paper there. And that looks like, doesn't that look like something moving really fast, like, or a planet going by, whoosh, like a blur? You know, pencil lines can be kind of blurred, kind of tentative. That'll show us about where we want the edge of the spaceship. And then um, remember, once we're done with penciling, we'll come in with black ink and we'll make it a final version. But for now, I just need my eraser maybe and my pencil. So I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna go across the bottom here and kind of bring up another curve up here. See how that's kind of angled? I'm thinking this is gonna be like a spaceship, like a tipped eye, as if it's leaning forward and going zoom across the page. So it's gonna look like kind of a fast spaceship here. And you can do your curves a little different. You can move anything around here, make up different stuff and invent different parts of your spaceship if you want. I'm gonna keep going and you can copy or don't copy if you want. I'm gonna put a big bubble in here and that's gonna be like the uh, the cockpit where they drive the spaceship. Maybe we'll curve it back a little bit, make it a little more streamlined. That's where you sit to drive this super fast spaceship here. And we're, we're using very simple curves, right? But then we're gonna work in a sense of depth. We're gonna bring out a sense of like making this a body, not just a flying saucer or a crazy hat shape, but an actual body in space, a spaceship that has weight to it. And mass. So here's what I want to do with this, with this cockpit, is I'm going to bring it across the, the front of the spaceship there, and then I'm going to walk it up the other side, see that? So that this is the back of the spaceship, this is sort of the front, and then in here, all in here, you get space to draw like a seat and a dashboard, and whoever's driving this spaceship. We can even start to clean up some of these lines we don't want. And I can see that nicely. In fact, I think I'll bring it around here. It'll tie in right there. There we go. And that's kind of popping up off the uh, off the top of the spaceship. Now, if this were solid, I could erase this line and it would look like a big dome, but I think it's gonna be see-through. It's gonna be glass. All right, the other thing. So that makes this the nose. That makes this the tail over here. So let's try putting like a little fin on that tail. I like a, sort of a shark fin there. And this is leaning down because I want to put like wings or something or, or a big engine or a wheel or something back here. So there's our shark fin on the top. We've got the cockpit, the body, the shark fin, maybe like a little wing coming down here. It's going to curve down. It'll join the body right there, right? And these are really short stubby wings. In fact, with this shark fin and this wing, it sort of looks like the fin of a shark or something. So maybe we need to rethink this spaceship and maybe this has another function. Let's cut away, let's scoop out the belly here. There we go, we'll just scoop that out, bring the curve down, right? It's all gotta be sort of curve, curvilinear and, and, and streamlined, right? So we started from a super simple shape here and we've curved the belly up and we can actually put in a little, let's put in a little rounded pipe there and we'll put a little, put a big propeller on there because I think this might be an underwater craft after all. The little fins like that. I'll erase those lines, right? And there we go. I'm going to take a quick snapshot of that. Let me go to my, I'll go to my 
camera and I'll take a quick snapshot. Now we've got a record of it. I like doing that when I'm working on the computer like this, because normally when I get done here, I don't know what the pencils look like. I don't even remember anymore. So I can take a snapshot and remember how we built this. I'm going to bring this end out as if it's sort of a tail, but it cuts off right there. Not a real pretty tail. It just kind of fades and cuts off there. And the real power is this propeller. Let's make that propeller a little bigger even. That's what's going to drive this thing. It's like a number eight, slightly elongated, right? And maybe that'll be kind of dark under there. Maybe that'll be like shadowed because it's tucked under. You know, maybe we'll shadow under that wing to make it look like it comes out a little more, right? We'll do all the shadows last, though. Let's not get into the shadows yet. We have to build what this spaceship looks like first. Um, so let's see. I'm thinking, remember how I said we do the ground here? I think we should put in some landing gear. So let's bring down a hatch door there. And we'll bring just a leg, maybe a telescoping leg. And we'll put two wheels on either side of it. So we'll do one there, one there. We'll put a hub on this wheel. We can't see the other side of that wheel. And there we go. A couple little lines on the bottom there. There we go. That looks kind of cute, actually. So how's it going to reach? Maybe there's like a, a, a leg that comes, slides down this wing like this, puts out an extension piece that folds up. And on that extension piece is a big wheel for the back. And we'll put another hub on that wheel and we'll put sort of a, an axle on it. And maybe there's like a, a little hydraulic piece here and maybe like a little wire coming off that end. That makes it look like it's got some machinery here. Maybe like a vent right there. We'll get into all those details later, but that looks kind of cool. Now, wouldn't there be a fin on the other side, right? So we can kind of imagine where that would be curving this line around. It'd be right about there, right about there. But So we can't see it, so I'm not going to bother drawing it in. But now that I know where it is, I know that there will be a um, landing gear coming down off that wing, curving like this and showing up right there. So we needed to find that wing, even though we can't see it and we'll erase all that. We needed to find it so we would know where that other landing gear goes. And I'm just gonna sort of gray that in because that is behind this. And now, now that we're here, we can actually go and make the ground. Like I said, after we build the ship, we can make the ground. <laughs> I never start from the ground up. I sort of build the ship or the character and then add the ground in, because I don't know exactly how heavy it's going to be, where it's going to be. I think this ground shadow is going to stay right around there. And that really makes this, this back end lift up if we keep the ground low here. So let's keep it low like that. That's going to look really cool when we ink that. OK, now we're getting somewhere. That looks like a really fast, lightweight sort of a water-based spaceship. Let's give it some decorations. We're gonna decorate the sides. We'll put some fancy gigaws and gadgets in there, and then we'll dive into the uh, cockpit and we'll put somebody in there driving. So the nose cone, let's see, I'm gonna make a curve. If I just draw a straight line, that doesn't help us see the, the curve of the body, right? So I'm thinking I'm gonna curve this around like this. There we go. We'll curve it around. Maybe we won't make it quite so pointy. I kind of like it being a little more rounded so that nose cone isn't, isn't like a carrot or a pencil point. It's more like a rounded aerodynamic nose cone there. Um, you know, I've always been partial to those spaceships and planes that have faces painted on them, like a shark face. So let's draw an eye on there. And we won't color this eye super black. We'll just kind of gray it in, right? So it looks like it's painted on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the spaceship. Let's give it a, a mouth, sort of a shark mouth. These were always my favorite planes and things when I was a kid. Any ship or plane that had faces painted on it because it makes it look so much more fun. 
And this mouth will not be blacked in. It'll be gray also, because that's just painted on the side. It's not an actual mouth. Or maybe it is an actual mouth. Maybe you want to sort of black it in. Maybe this is like a living, breathing shark ship creature. Um, but let's keep going with this. So I like how this curved line kind of brings out the roundness and the chubbiness of the body. We can even put a couple bolts around that to make it look extra solid, right? Let's bring another curved line around here. It's going to curve a little more because as the body goes back, it's going to get bigger and rounder. We'll bring this curved line out a little more. Oh, that kind of makes this look even more like a, a bulging belly with the propeller under it. I really like how that works. Let's make it sort of flat across the top and then curve this line down to that wing. I like how that looks. I don't know, like I said, we're, we're making a ship and we're just making it up. So let's add some sort of vent lines along this body here. That'll help it look long and fast. Let's add like a couple little service hatches up here. You can put a little handle there. I don't know what those go to, but you can make something up that it goes to, right? Maybe another little service hatch here. And maybe this is like a little intake vent. That could be kind of cool. Maybe let's put another intake vent right there. We'll just do these lines going like this. Then we can walk each line back a little bit. I don't know. Let's see here. Yes, David says, invaders from the planet tadpole. <laughs> I like it. Maybe this is like a little tadpole, right, who swims in this shark machine so that they can escape their, uh, their predators or something. Yeah. You guys have good ideas. It's nice to draw together because you can kind of share ideas. And I think this is like a cargo hatch. What do you think that is under there? Maybe there's like two little latches here <laughs> and you can put your duffel bag and your luggage in there. Let's bring like uh, some nuts and bolts around this canopy here. I'm just gonna bring a, a line equidistant from that curve. And then we can put like, you could put the dotted nut bolts on there. Makes it look more kind of mechanical. Or you could put like, lines making it look like tiled segments it's kind of nice to just i it's almost like it's like um mechanical engineering doodles right looks like here we've got a curve coming down my imagination makes me feel like there's another sort of vent there that the air goes or the water goes burbling into so let's put another set of lines there that can be another water grill vent that can open and close to take in water. Maybe there's like a water jet out the back when they need extra speed. They can use that. And we'll put a couple pieces of stuff on here. Uh, and let's see, I'm gonna put something going under here. It's gonna get a little darker under there, under the wing, so we won't really see it. What about the wing? Let's put a couple sections going back across the wing like that. And maybe here, and let's, what if on the tip of the wing, we put like a little stabilizer? We put like a little, little pill bubble like that, maybe with little fins on the back, and that can help it cut through the water there. I don't know if we need it on the shark fin. That would kind of spoil the effect of the shark fin up here, right? Let's put something along this rim of the wing, like some kind of shielding just in case they hit submerged logs or seaweed or something. Put a couple little bolts and nuts here. Maybe there's one more seam here. And there we go. That's starting to look like that helps the wing sort of those lines along the wing, give it a little more shape. Now I'm getting into, I don't want to get, I want to keep it fairly simple. So I'll just put a couple more lines on here. Maybe there's like some kind of boxy thing here. Looks like another vent or an access grate to something. I think it's time we got into the cockpit. So you can put, we if you made a nice big cockpit, you can put a rhinoceros in there. You can put a crocodile. You can put a hundred tadpoles in there. I'm thinking let's build up the controls of this ship first before we start flying it. 
So let's give ourselves like a little console, like a dashboard of a car. Bring it up there. So it comes up above the back of the ship a little bit, like it's just sticking up a little. And that's going to have the controls. You can put like levers and buttons. And maybe let's give it like a one of those steering wheels that's like two joysticks that you hold and you fly. And who's going to be flying this? Maybe um, I've, I'm going to put my favorite animal in here. I'll put a bunny rabbit in here. It can be like a bunny rabbit going underwater, maybe tiny little bunny rabbit legs, little bunny rabbit tail. Um, let's give them a, a seat behind them that kind of, kind of comes up a little higher here. We'll give it a headrest pillow. We'll give it a back pillow. That looks kind of nice. We'll erase the lines that go through our bunny pilot. Let's give them seat belts. So we'll put a little anchor here We'll draw a line that goes over that arm. I don't know if you're tadpoles, if you have tadpoles in your um, lake ship, your river river speeder, um, you, I don't know how tadpoles would wear a seatbelt. They couldn't all wear one seatbelt. They'd have to have lots and lots of tiny seatbelts. I don't know how it would work. That's gonna be up to you to figure out. Let's see, maybe right here we see the some controls on the side, like a scope, a radar scope, and another little readout. That's kind of cool. Maybe like I like to have like an old-fashioned microphone sticking up out of there, because this bunny rabbit can't wear a helmet with uh, earphones and a microphone. Get in the way of the big bunny ears. Maybe there's like some kind of recording apparatus, or maybe this is like the face of the plane itself, the robot that helps fly it, I don't know. Um, let's put like a little a contraption coming off this end and going forward, like a recorder, a sensor, and maybe on this wing, we'll put a little lens on the side of the uh, nose, we'll put a little lens. There we go, I like to put little little things like that that help the help it look like it's got some jury rigged gadgets added onto it. This is looking pretty fun. Um, it looks like this rabbit is ready to go speeding. Oh, you know what? This is cool to have this, this, um, this curved clear uh, canopy, but I kind of want to have uh, some, some archways to support it. So if you want archways to support it, let's bring a curve up to the very top. Bring it around. Oh, that's going to go in the way of our rabbit's face. Is that okay? That might be kind of cool. I'll make it a thin arch. So I'll double that line slightly. We'll do another back here. We will come up from here. Same kind of curve. It'll go around. And I'll just erase, or I won't ink those lines there. And maybe we'll want to have one in the front just in case they bump into some river weed on the very front to support the front. So we'll put another arch around there. That's looking kind of cool. I like how those lines kind of go in front of the stuff inside the canopy. In a way, like having those lines go in front of things makes everything look a little more solid, which is kind of kind of and counterintuitive, you know. Oh, we didn't put any. Oh, let's put an insignia. Maybe this fin up here will be just jet black and it'll have a symbol. Let's put like, now that we have a rabbit driving this, I'm going to put like the carrot, carrot core symbol in there. There we go. And that'll be orange and green on a black fin. That'll look really striking, really um, elegant. I think we are ready to ink. So I'm gonna set my pencil aside and may bring it back. I may come back to it. Let me put this up here. Um, I didn't say at the beginning, my website's merrickbennett.com. You can always find um, more live draws there. And thank you to the patrons of my Patreon who are making these live draws possible by signing up for the Patreon and helping us do this fall season of comics workshops. So as usual, I'm gonna start inking with my marker because I like to lay down the heavy, heavy lines. And that's gonna be like the most important defining shapes of the body. So I'm looking ahead. 
that's going to be like this wing edge is a defining shape. It's a big object coming out away from that body. But all those bolts and things on the wing, those are not defining shapes. Those are lighter details. So I'll come back in with my light pen and do those. I'm thinking I want a fairly thin line on this canopy because it's not a super heavy canopy. So maybe that might be a little too thick. Let me go to a thinner line. I can sort of smooth that out and narrow it down to a thinner line. I like that canopy being a little bit thinner. That makes it look a little less heavy. Let's keep the thick line for the back edge though. That's gonna make it really defined there. That helps, helps our eye see like, this is an equal edge to that. It's the edge of the object. Whereas this is just kind of the curved edge of glass you can see through. So it's not so heavy. And I also definitely want this fin. Whoops, came away from the pencil line there. That's all right, we're gonna erase the pencil lines. Definitely want this fin and these back shapes to brought out. I might even go in and darken this underside line so it's super heavy. That'll give the body some weight. Let me think. I think that I think that under propeller is also heavy. Like I said, that I'm going to come in with the thin lines and do like shadowing. So it's not going to be black. It's not all black. It's got like a little reflected light on it. It, it ends up looking kind of gray if you do a lot of thin lines with the white. And that's kind of cool because that, that's not pure black. It's like there's reflected light kind of illuminating it, maybe reflecting off the water nearby. It's a nice effect. Um, let's see, what about the wheels, the landing gear? I think I need to use the thin edge of my thick marker. Oops, where's the thin edge there? To give those wheels some weight. Maybe that'll be thin but this one in front will be thick. Let's give this defined shape a thick edge, heavy outlines, bold lines, right? We'll come down a little thinner edge here because this is a little lighter weight, not as, it doesn't pop off the page quite as much as that tip of the wing. So I'll just do slightly lighter lines. A lot of cartooning is all based on varying the thickness of your lines, right? Bringing those shapes out. That's looking kind of cool. I love the look of um, like a partly penciled, partly inked drawing. Isn't that cool? Let's, um, let me jump over to my camera and take a picture. Snap, got it. Now we've got a penciled version, a partly penciled, partly inked version. Put a gadget and light lines there. Now, let's see, we'll add a couple details into these landing gear. This one's going to be grayed, just like the propeller. Kind of nice, this is the meditative part where you're just putting lots of little lines into something and then you step back and it looks nicely shadowed. Um, oh, I'm gonna enjoy doing the shadow under that wing. We'll bring it right down the body there. But let's first get a couple more pieces on this side of the whole ship together. I'm gonna leave that line broken for these tiny little details. There, so that they kind of come out of that same piece of material. Look down in front of the bunny's face. That's gonna interfere with our view of the character because we don't see the character clearly. There's something in the way in front of their face, right? That slightly changes how close we feel to the character and how we think about them. Instead of maybe identifying with the bunny, we might feel more like this bunny is going past us in this crazy ship. 
subtle little things make a big difference in how a page reads. Put a little paw on that bunny there. Oh, it's like now it looks like the bunny's just reaching for the drop for the joystick. Put those ears on there. I guess I started. My instinct is to start inking up here so that I'm not smudging over all the ink down here. So I'll go left to right as I ink. So I better get this one too. I wonder how it would look to gray in that nose cone as if it were sort of painted dark red or something. That might be something we come back to if there's time. I feel like it works as it is. So I'll leave it for now. Whoops, canopy support. And then if there's time, we'll come back and maybe try graying it in with our pencil before we ink it. Sometimes I learned from doing like newspaper assignments, if you're working on a deadline, I've developed a way of like, uh, of drawing something in a really simple way of inking just the most important lines. And then if suddenly the deadline came and I didn't have time to do all the shading, I won't do all the shading, you know. But at least the main image is there. But we've got all the time we need because it's Friday afternoon, evening. Friday spaceship live draw. Nice way to relax and create something to uh, zoom around in in our stories over the weekend. These little bolts could be little circles. That would be stronger, wouldn't it? But I'll just leave them as little bolts for now. Let's finish the bunny while we're here. It's a little cute bunny with tiny little bunny legs. Tempted to gray in some of that cockpit because it's a little shadowed in there. We can't quite see what else is in there. High contrast seat belt there, holding the bunny safely in the cockpit chair, the pilot's chair. A little bit of cushioning back there. We'll shade that in a little bit and shade this one in. There we go. I think we're done with that cockpit for now. Although we might put like maybe a little milkshake cup tucked in here, crumpled up and tucked in, maybe crumpled carrot burger wrappers and stuff like that. You never know, this bunny might not keep a very clean river ship. There we go. Let's add the face painting. Remember, I'm not gonna black that eye in, I'm gonna keep it grayed. I don't want it to look super dark like the other parts of the plane. It's not like a super dark line like this belly outline here. Same with the mouth. It's like the paint might be a little faded. It's not super high contrast. It doesn't actually look like a mouth. It looks like it's on the surface, even if I shade a little bit under here. That will also help that lower contrast look. There we go. That helps it sort of look like it's curving down a little. I'm not going to get too far into the shading for this. I want to keep it as simple as possible. The, the luggage door. Maybe one more extra firm latch on that luggage door. We don't want it opening in flight, right? Now we are moving back into these hatchways back here. Those are maybe like for plugging in the different systems, diagnostic systems, things like that. Some delicate fins around these vents. Okay, we get to shade in that wing armpit now. Just finish this vent. I like how these repeated shapes look. When you take the time to do them one by one and get each little corner just the way you want it. 
then people might only look at it for a split second, you know, but they can see, oh, that's that's got this shape or that's got lots of details in there and they move on and it looks really real to them, even if they don't study it. So let's shade under this wing now. Go against, sort of cross over those lines under there, get a little darker. That kind of makes it the same shade as the propeller. So it starts to look like it's all of a piece. We'll do a couple shades along this curving belly. Now I do think that nose cone, let's go back to that nose cone before we go any further. And what if I just kind of shaded the bottom with lines like this? I'm practicing with the pencil because I'm not sure I want this. And then the top and we'll leave sort of a shining band because when you look at shiny, shiny things, they usually have like a, a band along them the way the light's shining off it. I think I will try that. So now I can follow those pencil lines. Ooh, I like the, the warm look of those lines. Which is better. I'm gonna keep them curved the way the nose cone is curved. It's a little hard to do from this angle, but I'm almost done. So that'll have to do. And then we can darken the underside a little bit, even out some of those lines. Best way to practice cross hatching like that is just to get in there and make lots of lines and get a sense of how your pen works. Oh, I'm glad we did that nose cone like that. I really like that. All right, we have a couple more details. I'm wondering if that back fin should be like all black with the carrot insignia on it. That would be really striking. Or maybe it'll be like this kind of dark with lines going along it. Let's see, I'll do the, I'll do the lines first because it's easy to replace the lines with all black. It's kind of a cool insignia. I must be channeling like Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew or something. Used to read those in the 80s. I'm not sure what this part of the of this machine does, but I bet the bunny pilot knows. Or maybe there's like a uh, another bunny that's the uh, technician who keeps this running. Maybe it's a tortoise or something or a giraffe with a long neck that can look all through here, or an octopus with a big, um, with a big toolbox. Let's see, put those bolts on there, put those bolts on there. I have a feeling, yeah, I'm gonna leave this wing pretty light because I want it to be a pretty clear shape coming down and then this this landing gear under here, this will be shaded because it's hidden by the wing. That's how we'll do this. That's how we'll keep it looking separate. There we go. A lot of it, a lot of drawing is just kind of working in one piece of the picture at a time and just having faith that you're, you'll figure something out when you get to the next part of the picture. Can't think of the whole thing. Can't think of the whole ship all at once. You have to just work out each part as it comes. Keep the other parts in mind and see how it turns out. I like that shading. That helps the wing come out in front of it. And keep practicing each time we draw it. We'll draw it a different way from a different angle. We'll learn something new about the shape. I think there's like, that's, that's our water jet thruster back there, right? Those are like two water jet thrusters that, that suck water in through the water jet here and shoot it out there. If the propeller is not enough, that can help us go faster. This is fun. What a good way to end the week, kind of drawing these ships together. Now I have to decide, is this going to be nose cone color or all black? I kind of, I think I'll just make it all black. Um, I'll do the nose cone first. I can always make it all black later. So I'm going to 
turn the page and I'll do it nose cone gray, which is of course all these bold lines, bold from my pen going along the fin there. Oh yeah, that's gonna look cool. You can always come back with a marker and black it in if I want it to be really strikingly black. But there's nothing else on this picture that's really strikingly black. So it seems to me like that might be a little bit of an overkill, unless I'm gonna color like the wing black or something else black, which I'm not really prepared to do yet. Cause I like that wing looking really light comes out towards us. Well, that's kind of cool. It looks a little like it's dinged up. Like maybe this fin sticks up out of the water and bonks into branches and things. It's all bent and dented and has to be fixed all the time. We'll put some dust and scratches on this back because probably as it slides around through the river weeds, it's going to get bonked and whacked a lot. We'll put some dust and scratches on the wing here. Some more on the body. Maybe like a little dent here, a little dribble of oil there. Oh, you know what we need is like a little handle right here. So when you put a ladder up, you can also grab a handle, right? Maybe we'll put a little, little place to hook a ladder into. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. Oh, look at the shadow underneath. I think I'm going to come in. That's going to lift it up off the ground some. I think I'll come in with my black. I could do sort of scratchy fine lines, but I kind of like a heavy drop shadow underneath there. So I'll just come in with the black and give it a nice black ground shadow here. Maybe it's a little bit rough, this ground. It's like mud at this side of the river. And I'll just kind of eyeball it, see what looks about right. Bring that shadow over here. I'm keeping it low, not following up towards the tail, right? Bring it right up to that wheel. It can be kind of blotchy and blobby, like a spilled ink blob, because that ground is rough. Maybe we'll do, oh, that really brings it out. I feel like it needs a little more under here, like the body is wider in this part. So let's just bring it out. And there's like a wing, isn't there? So the wing's going to shadow out a little more. Very cool. Well, you know, the last step, of course, in all this, it's going through and erasing your pencil lines, hiding your tracks. Oh, I saw one little detail I thought it would be nice to do. Is on these canopy connect, uh, connected canopy supports, we'll put little bolts just to strengthen them and add a little texture to that canopy. It creates it almost looks like a decorative border around the, the window. Maybe we should put a couple dust and scratch marks on the glass itself so it doesn't look too clean and clear, right? Ooh, that makes it look a lot faster having like, having those marks on the glass. All right, I think we're about ready to be done. Once I run the eraser over it, clean up all the pencil lines, which maybe you can't see on the screen there, but they show up. And when I scan this in, they will definitely show up. So what I'll do when I scan it in, remember, just like we did earlier this week with our live digital processing, is I'll scan this in, I'll blur it slightly, I'll boost the contrast. So every pixel in the picture becomes either black or white. That's why I have to get rid of these pencil lines because pencil can't decide, it's so gray, even dark pencil. So if I get scanning later, I'll, I'll bring this in and scan it and process it. 
and we'll have a final version. We're going to sign it and date it, and this will be another Friday Spaceship Live Draw. The Bunny's Shark Mobile. What's today? The 25th of September, 2020. Put a little heart and peace and imagination signs there. Cool. I will scan that in. Thank you to, uh, thanks for dropping by. And thanks to my patrons over on the Patreon for making these live draws possible. You guys rock. You guys make it all possible. Um, we'll see you again soon for some scanning and processing and some more drawing. I've got a lot of um, Freeman Colby pages coming together. Abraham Lincoln is making yet another appearance in 1864 in uh, the House of Representatives in Congress. It's an exciting scene over there. So maybe we'll do that next. Who knows? Um, thanks for stopping by, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. See you soon.